Good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to kind of go through an overview of uh, the basic um, uh, hydrometeorological state in the uh, Mississippi drainage and up into the Red River in the north and the Great Lakes. And then we'll be going by River Forecast Center around, starting at the Ohio River Forecast Center and then rotating around. So to begin with, um, on the first slide that is currently on your screen, it shows the, uh, from the Midwest Regional Climate Center the departure from normal precipitation since December the 1st. And what I did is, <clears throat> on the lower right, the smaller image is uh, just a small reference to last winter at the same kind of time frame. And um, this winter, um, we've got generally in the light green or yellow colors is at or below normal precipitation. So you see actually pretty widespread um, anywhere from 50 to 100 percent of normal precipitation covering much of the uh, upper Midwest through um, far western Great Lakes and down into the Ohio Valley, mid-Mississippi Valley, and even into parts of the lower Mississippi Valley. Uh, within there, there's some even drier areas in uh, eastern North Dakota and Minnesota, as well as western Tennessee and northeast Arkansas. Um, we do also have a, at or above normal precipitation in the western high plains into the northern Rockies. Um, but again, if you look at that smaller image, even those areas in general, except for maybe parts of Colorado and uh, into um, Nebraska and that, even those areas are not as wet as last year. But certainly the antecedent conditions last winter were much wetter across the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes, Ohio, Tennessee Valleys, and mid-Mississippi Valley relative to this year, um, where we see a little bit of wetting this year relative to last year in the west western portions of the uh, Arkansas Red Basin and up into a little bit of uh, the, the Missouri Hello. Basin. But overall, um, we are generally drier this winter relative to last winter. On the next slide, you will see our temperature departure this year compared to uh, last winter and the smaller image again. In general, across the Mississippi drainage, we're seeing normal to slightly above normal temperatures this winter. Now, this current Arctic outbreak, of course, is going to pull back a little bit on these, these temperatures, but again, over a three-month period, it'll only, it may make a, a degree or so change uh, to the cooler side. But certainly in the upper Midwest, um, in the northern portions, uh, northeast portions of the Missouri Basin into the upper Mississippi Basin, Basin and into parts of the Great Lakes, even though we've had periods of cold weather this winter, it is certainly not nearly as cold as last winter when we had uh, temperatures 5 to 10 degrees below normal. We're seeing in portions of the Great Lakes 1 to 3 degrees below normal on average since December 1st. And then in the western high plains into the upper Missouri Basin, uh, temperatures are running about 1 to 3 degrees above normal for the winter. And the uh, rest of the area is pretty close to normal. So, On the next slide is our uh, winter snowfall. Um, to date, and of course, you know, with snowfall like precipitation, you get uh, a wide degree of variance. Um, we see pockets of above normal snowfall in the northern Rockies, um, as well as like in Kentucky from this recent snowstorm that went through there. Um, but again, if you look at that smaller image on the lower right, just to give you a reference again to last winter, um, certainly the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, mid Mississippi Valley was much snowier last winter. Uh, for the most part, we're seeing gen a big area of generally at or below normal snowfall across the Mississippi drainage this year. Again, those, there are those pockets. One of the things is, though, in the upper Missouri basin, we've had above normal temperatures. So, th again, that has eaten away at a lot of that snowpack, as we'll look at in just a minute. As we do turn to the snow water content on the next slide here, uh, comparing last year on the left image to this year on the right image, one of the things on that right image that should be noted then is that we, we see a lot of light gray. That water content is very shallow, and generally water equivalents are on the order of tenths of an inch. One, two, three, four, five tenths of an inch. So not a lot of water content, even though you do see uh, really more gray on there than last year at this time. But the other thing that you'll really notice is in the uh, uh, northern um, high plains and the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes, we do not have nearly the snow water content that we did 
at this time last year. Most of our water content in the Mississippi drainage as well as the, uh, the Great Lakes is generally an inch or less. We do have those pockets, of the preferred pockets around like Lake Superior where you get uh, several inches of water content. But again, the message here is our overall water content as a whole in the basin is um, generally at or below average and certainly less than last year. The one exception I will, will highlight is, in, uh, just because we have an event coming up this weekend, is in Kentucky and Tennessee where they do have um, a decent amount of water content around an inch. As we look on the next slide at our soil moisture, again, because our precipitation has generally not been that wet and we have not had that much snow this year um, across the upper Midwest into the Ohio Valley, mid-Mississippi Valley, the soil water content, or the soil moisture, is generally at or below normal. Um, the one exception is in the upper Missouri Basin, which is still um, at or above normal in many places. In terms of a drought status, one thing that we've seen during the uh, late fall into the winter season is an expansion of the abnormally dry conditions in part, parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota, as well as some drought that continues to develop in portions of the Tennessee and Ohio Valley. At the same time, we continue to see in the Arkansas Red Basin the, the persistent drought that's really been going on now uh, for at least a few years in that area. As we look at now at the USGS streamflow conditions, again, kind of reflecting basically what we've seen from the precipitation patterns and that and snow patterns is a wide area of at or below normal stream flow across a good portion of the uh, central and lower Mississippi Valley into the Ohio Valley. Uh, pretty close to normal. Again, a lot of the reporting stations don't report during the winter ice season in the upper Midwest. We do see some uh, above normal stream flow conditions still in the, the northern Rockies. As we shift to the uh, Army Corps of Engineers uh, storage that is available, in their uh, different uh, divisions. Um, I don't have them all in yet. I'm trying to get them for tomorrow's call. But in general, I expect SWD will be about 99.9%. Um, NWD for the Missouri is 95%. Uh, in the Ohio Basin, it's 99%. Uh, and then down in the uh, Mississippi Valley Division, again, it'll be in the upper 90. So the bottom line here is the Army Corps of Engineers has um, ample storage uh, available this year. Um, for flood control operations. Now shifting gears a little bit into the uh, forecast mode that will lead us into our uh, spring flood outlook. We do have a storm system over the next seven days that will be moving across the mid-Mississippi Valley into the Tennessee and Ohio Valley and should produce anywhere from uh, one half of an inch up to uh, two, three, four inches. The main focus will be in the little bit of the eastern area of the mid-Mississippi Valley and on into the Tennessee and Ohio Valley uh, with that storm system. So the primary threat for uh, heavy rain with this storm system will be in the lower Ohio, Tennessee, and Cumberland Valley. At the same time, very light precipitation with that split flow uh, going on in the uh, upper Midwest and northern Mississippi Valley. In terms of moving out beyond that into the 8 to 14 day outlook, we'll continue to have that persistent split flow with uh, the northern jet stream driving cold air down from uh, the polar regions into the upper Midwest Great Lakes and eastern Mississippi Valley especially, while at the same time a southern jet stream will be bringing the uh, more preferred rain and storm track from the western U.S. into the southern Mississippi Valley and then shifting on up into portions of the lower Ohio Valleys. At the same time, with that split flow, below normal precipitation is expected to continue from the seven-day period into that eight to 14-day period across portions of the Great Lakes into the upper Midwest. Looking further ahead, these are the new Climate Prediction Center uh, outlooks, and this is the March outlook. They've revised the temperatures from uh, being at or above normal in the uh, upper Midwest and Great Lakes to now being forecast to be a little bit below normal with equal chances of temperatures across the rest of the Mississippi drainage. Uh, as for precipitation, in general, they're just going with equal chances. Uh, the exception would be in portions of the lower Ohio, Tennessee, and Cumberland Valleys, where above normal precipitation is uh, forecast. Shifting further, further ahead to the 90-day outlook, running from March through May, 
Um, now they're forecasting temperatures across the uh, lower Mississippi Valley into the Arkansas and Red Basin of generally below normal temperatures and equal chances across the remainder of um, a good portion, at least, of the, the Mississippi drainage. Um, a little bit of the northern upper portion of the Missouri Basin is forecast to see above normal temperatures. And for precipitation, they're going equal chances across a good portion of the, the uh, central part of the country. Uh, in response to a very, um, we're kind of not quite to El Nino signal there, but we are getting some atmospheric response. Um, there's definitely indications in the climate models of maybe some wetness in the western portion of the Arkansas and Red Basin and on up into portions of the Missouri Basin in the Rockies. <clears throat> The latest drought outlook that I had to, to pull from basically is more of the same persistence from that drought monitor. The exception would be is if we wet up in portions of Colorado and northeast uh, New Mexico kind of area, uh, we could see some improvement in drought conditions in the, uh, those western areas. Now I'm going to go ahead and shift into the, uh, the flood outlook for the Mississippi drainage, including the Great Lakes and the Hudson drainage of uh, the uh, upper Midwest. And uh, basically the, the big message is because precipitation and uh, snowpack is generally at or below normal, the bottom line is what's really going to drive this spring flood season is really going to be the weather systems of rain. Now, there's still time for, uh, as uh, Kevin will talk about in the Missouri and Steve will talk about in the upper Midwest, there's still time to add snow water content in, in those areas of the Missouri and the upper Mississippi drainage, but that time is beginning to uh, run uh, shorter um, as each week goes along. So the bottom line is, because the snow water content and along with the uh, antecedent conditions are at or a little bit drier than average across a good portion of the area, um, we're expecting generally the flood risk is at or a little bit below normal as a whole. There are details within that. But in general, um, this is probably one of the quieter years that we've seen, you know, compared to, like, say, a 2011 kind of year. Um, at the same time, though, um, if you want to really slice it and dice it, the, if right now it looks like the northern portion of the Mississippi drainage is um, at or a little bit below normal, where as we work south, it's getting closer to, to average. And that's that area of circled where we have the 50% chance or greater of flooding. You see most of those colors of the oranges and a few um, reds for moderate floods. They're generally in the mid-Mississippi Valley into portions of the western Ohio, Tennessee, Cumberland Valley, and down into the lower Mississippi Valley relative to uh, the, the remainder of the basin. So with that, now we're going to shift into each individual river forecast center area and uh, have a little bit more of uh, discussion. So we're going to go ahead and begin with, on the next slide, the Ohio River Basin. And what we're expecting is kind of a two-fold area for the Ohio Valley. In the northern basin of northern Indiana and northern Ohio, we're expecting normal to slightly reduced risk of flooding relative to normal. That still means that we are expecting some minor floods, and there is plenty of ice out there in um, um, Pennsylvania, northern Ohio, and uh, northern Indiana on the rivers. So there is a, the chance of some ice jam flooding. If we can get the timing of snow melt as we go into March along with rainfall um, with that ice pack, there could be some problems up there. Um, and especially with cold weather, you know, our ice pack on those rivers has been thickening here in the last week or two as well. But the main area to focus in the Ohio Basin would be in the lower Ohio Basin down into the Cumberland area. Even there, we're expecting a seasonal or near normal flood risk. And uh, that will be primarily driven by rainfall, okay, that... We do have that snowpack, and that will be coming out in Kentucky and Tennessee this weekend. Um, but after that, it will be mainly, uh, as typically is the case, uh, springtime showers and thunderstorms will be driving those flood threats in those areas. And finally, for the Ohio Basin here, as I get ready to summar summarize it, I do want to highlight at least in the very short term, we use a short-term seven-day ensemble forecasting system here at the Ohio River Forecast Center, and that link is at the bottom, um, and that co covers all of the eastern river forecast centers as well. 
Uh, and I zoomed in on the portions of southern Indiana and especially down into Kentucky and Tennessee, where this weekend we do expect uh, one half to one inch of snow water content to melt, along with two to isolated areas of up to four inches of rain, especially in western Kentucky and western Tennessee. That could promote some minor and a few preferred areas that typically get moderate floods in eastern Kentucky. It will all depend on the exact storm track and that kind of stuff. But in general, we're expecting a minor flood event uh, in the lower Ohio Basin down into the Cumberland Basin of Tennessee uh, over this weekend. So in summary for the Ohio and Cumberland Basins, our uh, rainfall is forecast not too far from normal over the next three months. Our snow water content is normal to below normal, uh, with the exceptions of Kentucky where we do have about one inch of water equivalent on the ground right now, and that is above normal. But we do expect most of that to come out this weekend. We also do have above normal snow water content near Lake Erie um, from a lot of the lake effect snow events um, this, uh, over this winter. Generally, minor flooding is expected this uh, late winter and the spring in the Ohio River Basin. And generally, our risk is considered about normal, about normal for a good portion of the basin, slightly below normal possibly in the northwestern watershed. And finally, rainfall and thunderstorms will be the primary um, determinant of spring flooding. So with that, I'm going to now go ahead and turn it over to Steve Buen at the North Central River Forecast Center to talk about the upper Midwest. OK, thanks, Jim. Uh, we'll start off here with what uh, we show as our simulated snow water content, which uh, is a proxy for the accumulated precipitation over the winter period. Um, and what you can see here, uh, looking at areas that are green and blue up in the, the Great Lakes, uh, that's pretty much driven by the lake effect snow engine that's been going on. We saw all that uh, snow that occurred uh, out east, got all the press. Well, uh, we were getting lake effect snow in the, uh, up in the western lakes, too, at the same time. And so they've picked that up, uh, picked up the heavier accumulations, which are fairly near, near to slightly above normal for them for this time of the year. Um, you can also see some of that in uh, western lower Michigan, too, with some of the lighter colors, uh, kind of your greens and yellows there, where they've picked it up. What, what is remarkable about the, the rest of the map is the kind of striped nature you see in the light browns and the dark browns, indicating where you can, you can actually pick out the synoptic scale weather events that have crossed uh, the upper Midwest this winter, and you can basically count it on one hand how many times that's happened. So we've got a very, um, very scattered snowpack out there, scattered wet areas, uh, principally looking from eastern Iowa across northern Illinois, northern Indiana, into southern lower Michigan. Um, that was one of the larger events that went across the area. Um, and we'll see in detail why their, their risk is a little bit higher. But when you get into Minnesota and North Dakota, um, really with this northwest flow pattern, we have not picked up synoptic scale uh, weather events, uh, systems across that area to paint much of a coherent picture of snow accumulation. In fact, uh, it's nearly brown uh, everywhere in the southern uh, two-thirds of Minnesota and eastern North Dakota. Next slide, please. So let's look at the Great Lakes. Uh, and uh, focus in here a little bit. And we'll start with that slight enhanced flood risk area across um, uh, south central um, lower Michigan, extending from the Grand Basin over into the basins in the Detroit area. And even though we only see a few dots there that indicate 50% um, uh, risk at minor flooding, uh, that's about a 20 to 30% increase over what would be your seasonal uh, normal for this period of time. And so we do expect that with, the, with a typical weather pattern maybe evolving into the, into the uh, March, maybe early April time frame, that we'll see some scattered uh, minor flooding across Michigan. At least that's probably one of the best risks for flooding in the NCRFC area this spring. Um, elsewhere into northern Indiana, the Great Lakes drainages of uh, southwest Michigan, northern Indiana, uh, eastern Wisconsin, and the rest of the area. We're seeing a very seasonal risk for flooding there. Um, flooding may occur maybe at that 30% level typically, and so we're not seeing that skew up to the 50% level where we would color the dots in here. And we're also seeing an, there's an adequate um, 
we expect that there'll be adequate seasonal runoff uh, for hydropower uses here, filling up uh, reservoirs that get drained down over the winter. That uh, we're seeing what we see as a seasonal uh, normality here uh, so far. But when you get into the western lakes up there in the Arrowhead of Minnesota, um, we're seeing a distinct uh, uh, lack of accumulation of snow uh, there, and uh, we see that there'll probably be um, more of a risk of too little runoff uh, to refill some of those lakes up there unless we can start to get some southwest flow and get those types of storms um, and bring in, in some moisture into that area. Next slide, please. Moving across over to the Hudson Bay drainages of uh, North Dakota and Northwest Minnesota, here we got a little bit of a dichotomy going on here. Um, if you get into the real detail of where the lack of precipitation over, the, say, the last six months has been, it's been from about the Devil's Lake area eastward and south and southeast is where that real lack of precipitation has been. You get westward into the Suris Basin, they've had a little bit more fall precipitation and winter precip over there. So we're seeing the normal uh, seasonal flood risk over there um, in, in that area. But when you get over into the, into the Red River Valley, um, I'd say over the last five to six years, I maybe can't remember ever, uh, all, the, all the sites being less than 50% chance of reaching flood stage in the spring period. Uh, this is where the, the drought covers a significant percentage of the, of the basin, a D1 drought. Um, it would take a pretty remarkable change in pattern here to get anything going in the Hudson Bay area. Next slide, please. The upper Mississippi is kind of a, a little bit of a tale of two things going on here, with the Minnesota section being that drought, um, approaching drought. We don't have a designated D1 drought yet, it's D0, uh, but the, the definitely looking at expansion of that if we don't get the spring rains to come. Um, and uh, it's, again, a substantially reduced flood risk there with no, no sites indicating 50%. But as you move southeastward towards, say, eastern Iowa over in northern Indiana, uh, flood risk goes to seasonal to slightly enhanced uh, in the just south of Chicago uh, in that so the upper reaches of the Illinois main stem over into the Kankakee. We've seen a couple bouts of, of uh, minor flooding over there in the winter with some thaws that we had back in January. Soils are a little wetter over there, but again, very isolated uh, in nature because as you move south again, it had less precipitation there. And so uh, the colored dots you see are there along the main stem, Illinois, um, and not the tributaries in central Illinois. And then as it all accumulates and it all reads down the Mississippi down to just north before the Missouri comes in, we're seeing that seasonal flood risk return, um, the counterbalancing of the enhanced risk to the east and the lower risk to the northwest, it all comes out in the wash there around the St. Louis area to the seasonal risk. So next slide. Uh, so again, with that roller coaster we've had with the temperatures this winter, we've had some, some staying power in our ice problems in Wisconsin and Illinois especially, and over into Michigan. Um, and we expect that those will go on as we keep the roller coaster going with the cold temperatures now, probably go swing back to warm. It's going to have to be rain-driven if we're going to get significant flooding. Uh, with the frozen ground that now extends all the way down to the southern Illinois area, um, uh, rains could, uh, runoff could be enhanced with frozen ground, so be on the alert for that. If you, if you uh, see a rainstorm coming and you've got frozen ground that's two or more inches, you definitely be looking at that. And uh, again, Illinois and southern Michigan. That, that's all I got, so I'll turn it over to Kevin Lau. Thank you, Steve. Uh, this is Kevin with the Missouri Basin. So uh, let me start off by saying that in general, uh, we're projecting a normal to somewhat below normal risk for flooding within the Missouri Basin. Um, so this first slide, we're looking at the mountains. Um, the left-hand plot shows the mountainous basin snowpack conditions in percent of uh, normal snow water equivalent. Snowpack conditions in the mountains can be categorized as near average for almost all the mountainous west, with the exception of the uh, North Platte and the Milk, and, and where their higher uh, snowpacks are a bit below um, average. The uh, February water supply forecast that was developed by the Natural Resources Conservation Service and collaborated with our office was issued Tuesday. And the summary graphic is shown on the right. Uh, 
this most recent water supply forecast reflects conditions as of February the 1st, and it suggests that um, we're going to see an average mountain snowmelt runoff season in 2015 overall, uh, with the North Platte contribution being below normal, so that's where the exception would be. So the next slide, um, I, I show this every year. This is a typical snow water equivalent accumulation plot for a snow tail location um, in um, the headwaters of the Yellowstone. And I show this graph to illustrate uh, just how far along we are in the uh, mountain uh, accumulating, accumulating season. The uh, light blue trace is the historic accumulation for the past 30 years. And so for this date, on February the 19th, we're typically about 70% of, of the way through the snow accumulating period. So as was already said, um, we, we've still got uh, a little ways to go uh, before we know the full picture as far as the mountain snowpack goes. And so that's, that's just the idea I wanted to convey with this plot. Next slide, please. Oh, wait. Well, uh, uh, so with, a, with an average mountain snowpack, our uh, long-range river stage projections do not indicate the likelihood for significant flooding due to mountain snowmelt alone. Okay, so moving on then to the plains with the next slide. Thanks. Uh, and again, you've already seen this uh, slide once before, but um, there is a fairly uh, wide widespread blanket of snow in the plains, but as has already been said, uh, it's quite shallow. Uh, there are some two-inch snow water re reports in the headwaters of the James River Basin up in uh, North Dakota, and, um, and of course some larger amounts in the Black Hills and South Dakota, but in general, uh, as Jim has already said, the majority of the, of the reports are in the tents, and in the Missouri Basin it's like one-third of an inch or less as far as the liquid equivalent. Okay, um, so now moving on to uh, more of a watershed by watershed kind of um, um, analysis here. Uh, snow conditions are, or it's not snow, but soil conditions are somewhat of a mixed bag. Uh, we think that the upper few inches are wetter than normal for, for much of the plains area, but we also believe that the deeper soils are drier than normal. Uh, again, um, our uncertainty points out the need for... Uh, soil moisture um, measurements, but anyway, uh, as, as Steve alluded to, frozen ground also is a player, um, and that was evidenced uh, last week, or last few weeks, I guess I should say, in both the Hart and the Knife River Basins in North Dakota. And so while we do have just a little plain snowpack, we do believe that the potential exists for some localized minor flooding uh, in the northern plains. Um, due again to uh, uh, rain on frozen ground conditions. Um, our outlooks do indicate the possibility for minor flooding along the Little Muddy and the Knife Rivers in North Dakota and in the James and the Big Sioux Basins in South Dakota. I also want to mention that um, uh, higher than normal stream flow conditions in the fall, uh, coupled with uh, a series of bitterly cold temperatures alternating with unseasonably warmer temperatures, has led to ice formation and breakup on many of the streams and rivers already this season, and we've seen some uh, ice-induced high water uh, already, and, but the associated impacts have been localized and relatively minor. But ice jam flooding, as Steve uh, has already mentioned, will continue to be a threat uh, for the next few weeks. And then the next slide, thank you. Um, so moving now toward the, the lower third of the basin, convection drives the uh, springtime flooding down here. Of course, any snow that does build up and quickly, quickly melts away does help to keep the soil moisture up, but thunderstorm activity is the primary driver of the flooding in the lower third. Long-range forecasts uh, developed by our office this week would suggest the likelihood of minor to moderate flooding this spring in, in some areas of Iowa, eastern Kansas, and Missouri. Affected river systems include the Floyd and the Little Sioux in Iowa, the Big Blue and the Meredith Scene in Kansas, the Grand, the Osage, the Cheriton, and the Platte Rivers in Missouri, and many of the smaller tributaries that are feeding the Missouri River in, in the state of Missouri will also experience flooding due to spring rains, and this is typical. 
Um, and even though I show the Missouri River as in the red, uh, don't be alarmed by that. Um, there is the possibility that the Missouri River below Nebraska City will have a few locations that would exceed uh, minor flood stage uh, in the late spring. Again, this is not atypical. So in summary, and I'll just touch on the last three bullets here, um, we don't expect any significant flooding due to mountain snow melt alone. Uh, general, generally localized minor flooding is possible in the plains due to rain on frozen ground. And then finally, um, minor to moderate flooding due to convection is likely in Missouri and Kansas and Iowa, and this is typical. And this concludes my brief. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This first graphic basically reiterates the fact that much of the ABRC area continues to experience drought conditions. The top two images um, show the precipitation since the beginning of the water year in October. On the left and the upper right shows the February precipitation thus far. Pretty much the only places that are above normal are in Colorado and New Mexico and a little bit of southwest Kansas as far as the longer range, longer duration precip. The February precipitation in Colorado and New Mexico, it's kind of a little bit, uh, I'm not sure what to say. It is above normal, but again, numerically it's only about a half inch to an inch total, so it's not too drastically wet out there. And the bottom left image shows our currently modeled soil moisture conditions. Again, you can see pretty much the center part of our basin is, is pretty dry. Next slide, please. Snow water equivalent up in the uh, upper reaches of the Arkansas River are slightly below the median values as calculated by the NRCS at about 88 to 89 percent. Again, much of this snowpack is along the spine of the, of the western and northwestern border of our basin, and it doesn't really extend all the way down into southeast Colorado. Um, the slide on the lower right shows the uh, current reservoir storage. That's in relationship to conservation pool. Uh, you can see, don't look at the numbers, but generally the green areas, the light green, shows they're slightly below conservation pool. The darker greens are slightly into, into flood pool. So you can see with much of our area being highly regulated, much of our rivers being high, highly regulated, we have a lot of uh, flood pool storage available for any uh, convective rains that we may get later this spring, and that's typically where most of our flooding comes from. Next slide, please. Finally, our uh, flood risk is going to be near normal uh, through April. Even though we're in the midst of a drought, um, our long-range forecasts do show a few points with a greater than 50 percent probability of flooding. Um, these points, however, have historically flooded greater than 50 percent of the past years, so that would uh, be why our flood risk is near normal. Now we'll pass it along to Katie. All right. Thanks, James. All right. Looking at the graphic here, you can see that we're showing the 60-day departure from normal precipitation. And you can see that we've got drier conditions for the northern skirts of the LMRC area, um, especially up in the western Tennessee, eastern Arkansas, and northern Mississippi portion, uh, where we're seeing a deficit up to between 2 to 6 inches. Um, I must note that um, earlier when Jim was showing the forecast precipitation, that next weather system that's going to be coming through um, is going to be bringing that access of heavy um, precipitation to that area. So we'll see how it impacts the drought conditions. Um, but most of that is going to be uh, frozen precipitation, so we're not too confident um, in it helping too much. Um, but with the precipitation deficit, uh, it's, de it's led to some moderate drought conditions for this area. Um, and you can see that represented in the stream flow conditions on the next slide. And this is showing the 28-day average um, stream flow um, conditions compared to the historicals. And you can see that uh, we have normal to below normal stream flow conditions along the uh, lower Mississippi portion. Um, especially, we've got um, a much, uh, much below normal conditions on the uh, Yazoo River uh, tributary. And um, anyway, we're, we're looking at uh, normal to below normal stream flow conditions for most of the area, um, and that's going to play a role into the flood potential for, um, for this coming spring. I'll go into the next slide. 
you can see that uh, we're showing, this is, this is excluding the Mississippi River, uh, we're showing a seasonal flooding potential for um, the tributaries of the Mississippi with um, just some minor to moderate flooding uh, that's normal for the area. And then as far as the lower Mississippi portion, we're expecting an average to below average spring flood potential. Um, and this is just based on the upstream conditions um, and the dry conditions that are currently going on. Um, so in summary, going to the next slide, uh, you can see that um, based on everything that we show, we've got drier conditions for the majority of the lower Mississippi Valley. Um, this has been over the past 60 days, um, especially over the last month. Um, and in that uh, portion where we were showing where the drought conditions were, um, we're, seeing an, um, we're seeing definitely a, a below normal conditions there. The flood potential for um, the Ohio and the upper uh, Miss and uh, Missouri basins um, are leading to a normal seasonal to below normal conditions for the lower Mississippi portion. Um, and then, of course, for the, um, the LMRC area and the tributaries as a whole, seeing normal to below normal conditions uh, with reduced, um, reduced flood potential over the drought areas in Arkansas, Tennessee, and northern Mississippi. Um, now, with that said, uh, the flood potential will be driven by individual convective rainstorms um, across the Ohio and Upper Miss and then the Missouri basins. Um, and then, the, of course, the seasonal um, flood potential for us um, over the LMRFC area will be driven by individual convective systems as well. And we'll be monitoring these conditions and any changes that occur. Um, but with that, I'm going to pass it back on to Jim. All right, thank you, Katie. So to go ahead and summarize it, so for 2015, we're considering, generally speaking, normal or a little bit below normal flood risk across a good portion of the Mississippi drainage into the Red River of the north. And again, as uh, Steve said, a lot closer to normal, maybe a few pockets of above normal in the Great Lakes. Snowmelt will not be as big of a contributor this spring season to uh, flooding as we've seen in uh, several of the recent past years. And so spring rains will be needed, and so that's the big wild card here, card here is where we get those spring rains, we could induce some flooding. But again, the lead time of that is, of course, uh, a lot less. And we'll be going ahead and continuing to monitor this, and we'll have an updated briefing for the WFOs on March 4th, and then for the partners will be on March 5th. 